After we got in touch, as I came across an article he wrote about the systems recruitment contemplation video, Max Jan, or is it Max Yan, of MaxJan.com, invited me to make a blog post for his website. I accepted and thanked the honor. The links are in the description. As I contemplated on it, I realized that it was an opportunity to summarize much of what was previously addressed in a more condensed manner, as much as we can condense that which, through words, needs so many of them to even attempt at a glimpse of realization. It is fitting to do such a review, as I still am in the mournful wake of Boo's passing. To better understand Boo's importance and significance, please refer to the contemplations named Walk of Life, I Love Chicken, and Droopy-Eared Angel. The world is a vampire, set to drain. This is the statement that begins the song Bullet with Butterfly Wings from the band Smashing Pumpkins. Not that I am a fan, particularly, but this is one of those lyrics that could serve as an example for a transmuted spell that was cast on the communication channels of pop culture. Certainly, the idea behind it was the promotion of the depression, demoralization and internal strife that so characterized emo culture. This culture was but one among many others that served as a hook to capture any post-children, or adolescents in other words, that were going through the conflict stemming from the realization that what was conveyed and offered to them in childhood had nothing to do with adult life. To capture them, first they were sold fantasies as children, then thrown head-on against reality's wall, only to then offer identification frameworks, examples, settings, entire cultures. This would not only prevent the individual from using that conflict of facing reality to contemplate and perhaps connect to an ineffable source, a truth only realized but never touched, beyond the fog of the world, but also to be packaged, catalogued, and stored into an array of acceptable identification. By acceptable one must understand that it is meant an identification that feeds the world itself. So, going back to the lyrics I mentioned, the intent behind the world is a vampire set to drain was not a warning against the obvious vampire of the world, but a promotion of helplessness in the face of it and the preparation to become its feeder by becoming paladin of the wrong master and going against the wrong enemy. And what is the wrong master? Anything that is not life and love. And what is the wrong enemy? Anything that would remove the individual from that vampirized state. Nevertheless, despite this, those lyrics do state a fact that can be transmuted to a higher, truer sense and, therefore, be read as a warning that is moral in nature. It is, ultimately, how we read them, what we internally make of the spells given to us, that constitute our deeper moral choices. As was stated in the Contemplation Systems Recruitment that Maxwell wrote about in his blog post, the idea of the world is to recruit the living that is, to convince the living to generate food for the world of fog, or the vampire. How is this done at a deeper level? Sure, we can all understand that someone who starts off pure-hearted can then be tempted into accepting gradual changes that will deviate them from that purity, and even turn them into evil enforcers. Yet, at the deeper level, how is it done? What happens beneath the visible surface of cause and effect? I will use two metaphors to try to describe it, and none are particularly new, but they do not need to be, however, as they complement each other. One is that the vampire feeds not directly from the life of the living, as it cannot touch it or it will kill it, like the sunlight of vampire myths, but from the transformation or pre-digestion, if you like, of that life into a tumor form, 
a decaying and death-aligned mass. So the living is convinced by strife and shock to willingly use some of their life to generate a dead mass that can be consumed by the vampire, or bacteria and fungi, as I used in that contemplation. By doing so, the world can then feed the whole food chain of cult priests, not only at the manifest human level, but also mental levels. For more on this, refer to the contemplation named Cult of Sin. Basically, a parasitical life form that convinces the all-important host to enact behavior that feed it and protect it. Very prevalent in nature. In fact, parasitism is nature's favorite lifestyle because it is the most successful in it. This can only be explained if nature's mind, so to speak, is already also taken over by a parasitical identification or otherwise if nature itself is part of the original parasite. That is a debate that is quite fruitful to have in terms of circumstance perception. If one is so inclined to it, I would suggest reading the Acts of Pilate, a part of the Gospel of Nicodemus, Apocrypha, whose part two, called Descent to Hell, serves as a most dramatic and interesting depiction of the Christian harrowing of hell. Link in the description. Another metaphor is that of the mirror or mirrors. And this metaphor is more helpful to understand the importance and significance of our internal alignment. If we come to realize and accept that we have a life or a treasure that the parasites need us to use in a certain way for their survival and proliferation, then we need to understand how this process works and also, most importantly, how the parasites come to be in the first place. Imagine that each of us have a mirror that is also simultaneously a window that looks out onto the world and whose window throws onto the world our internal state of affairs. The world itself is a mirror too, so it reflects the type of image cast by our window back at us. Then, our individual mirror potentially reflects that same image. If the two mirrors are aligned and are reflecting that image, it will create an infinity mirror effect, which is basically a reflection that is endlessly replicated to infinity, even though it becomes smaller and less defined the farther it is from the original image. Therefore, if we can be convinced to project onto the mirror of the world a parasite or food for it, it will replicate in this way, as the individual mirror and the world mirror will reflect each other and our cast image. This is why it is important to first look internally, to observe everything around us as a manifest image of something within, so that we can purify the image we project, at least, or even to be able to one day not project at all, and leave the shadow world, at best. For more on this, please refer to the contemplation Shadow Play. These two metaphors were discussed in both Metaphors of Tumors and Mirror Contemplations. In summary, the world is a vampire set to drain, yes, but we were the ones who projected it and keep projecting it as it is. There is an interlinked code in Christianity, but not in the Bible, that is very useful in that regard, the seven deadly sins. These are interlinked because the sins feed each other too, and they change our inner color, refer to the contemplation named sin and forgiveness. However, if one can become alert to the influence these have within us, it will be already like opening a curtain and letting the sunlight hit the vampire of the world, because the shadow reflected on that infinity mirror effect and the production of those tumors it feeds on is halted.